yeah so to all our participants uh, thank you very much for uh, attending our webinar and uh, once again you know at the risk of repeating uh, dr ranade we have a friend sakib jalil malik all the way from islamabad and so i'll go ahead and first uh, introduce our panel you know we have uh, dr tirthankar patnaik uh, chief economist at the national stock exchange and uh, i call him a friend of the academy you know he's uh, he's always been advising us he's actually taught at the academy and a few students of ours have worked at the national national stock exchange in his team as uh, researchers which is a matter of great pride for us and uh, tirthankar is a mathematics guy all the way uh, bsc in mathematics msc in statistics from madras university and then a phd from igidr next i introduce all of you to our mentor friend philosopher and guide dr ajit ranade until recently the chief economist at the aditya birla group now he has taken over as vice chancellor at uh, uh, the gokhale institute of uh, uh, politics and economics to which of course meghna desai academy is affiliated but really you know he is the one who we go to for advice uh, counsel etc so such a such an honor and a delight to have you uh, dr ranade and we Thank have you. mahima soni my uh, dear student and a very very busy financial advisor now at deloitte you know and it's uh, it's such a thrill you know 2 uh, 3 years ago uh, they are in our your classroom you are teaching them and 2 3 years down the line they are industry veterans so mahima is a ba in economics from Sophia passed out uh, 2019. Then she worked in J.P. Morgan uh, in investment banking, and after that she came to Meghna Desai Academy, uh, which in itself uh, delights us. And after she graduated from the economy, she has been working at uh, Deloitte in their financial advisory division, and working with financial disputes, litigation resolution, economic impact assessment, and many other things. so let's get started because i know everybody is pressed for time so you know the topic of today's webinar is how to make the best of the post pandemic job market but really the underlying theme is the meghna desai academy of economics you know we consider our role to be to enable students for uh, good jobs and good careers and the two years pandemic period has been a harrowing and uh, also an interesting experience for all of us and we have been discussing all along so the academy really wants to be in the uh, on the forefront of figuring out what are the changes happening in the world of careers so that we can guide our students accordingly we can change our curriculum accordingly so this is all about enabling our young students who have turned up in good numbers today uh, so you know when we talk about the post pandemic economy there are so many uh, points that are discussed uh, a lot remote work you know everybody said when the pandemic started that the future was remote work is that what's happening in your organizations e-commerce a lot of us had to turn to e-commerce for even our basic needs how is that panning out now are people going back to brick and mortar shops automation what is the role of automation because when uh, the pandemic broke out automation was spoken as something that will really really uh, take off and i read a mckinsey report and they say that there is an even increasing percentage of the labor force which now have the need to switch uh, occupations and of course we can talk at length about the economic recovery as we get out of the pandemic so i think uh, i can go with dr ranade uh, first so dr ranade all of these points you know and finally what is what are our young students to uh, learn from all of this is there a new set of skills that they need to learn how do they make the best of the changes that we have seen in the last two years yeah, thanks amlesh and thanks for the very kind words and thanks to be among tirthankar mahima bhageshri and everyone else mayer i think the best uh, way to utilize this time amlesh if i can request you is to actually immediately open it for q and a and comments because you know uh, I, i you know all of us economists uh, love to give speeches and canned speeches and we love to talk and talk and talk Uh, but it would be much more effective if we can actually have us interaction and try and address specific things that are on people's mind 
but since you've given me, uh, let me just at least take two minutes. That uh, everything in the world is uncertain. Uh, nobody thought, you know. Uh, I mean, nobody sort of anticipated the pandemic. If, if in the last five years, if you ask me, these used to be called black swans. But actually, black swans are supposed to happen once in hundred years or something like that. But if you look at the last five, six years, uh, even the New York Times predicted that Hillary Clinton would win, but actually Trump won. In June, uh, around June, uh, in June 2016, uh, everybody was confident that uh, the Brexit would be defeated, but actually Brexit won. And the unthinkable happened after 50 years, the United Kingdom, UK decided to break away from uh, from European Union. Um, what else? I mean, uh, the pandemic is another example where, you know, in December 2019, I don't think we expected what a, what a tremendous disruption it would be. Then, you know, Ukraine. You know, everybody now says, oh, we knew it was coming. But nobody talked about Ukraine as a big risk. So I think you know, four or five, I can think of so many examples which have happened in the last just 10 years. So the world is full of uncertainty and we are constantly trying to cope with uh, uncertain events. We have to be, so resilience, agility, I'm sorry, this, this may sound like very, uh, you know, cliched word, but that's what's important. You have to be resilient, you have to be agile, you have to be adequately acquire all kinds of skills, be prepared for, uh, you know, suddenly uh, this year, the IT sector, the analytical sector, including I think Mahima's company, Deloitte, if you, they're, they're, they're hiring big time. I'm told 3X. I'm sure even the NSC is hiring. So uh, suddenly we are, we are supposed to be uh, coming out of the pandemic. So there's pent up demand. But before even the hiring season is over, now they are talking about stagflation and a recession in the US. And this may be the you know, recession much worse than 2008. So it's really pointless trying to predict uh, outcomes. I think we have a hand up from Dawal. So I think maybe I'll let Peer say a few words and maybe come back to the conversation. So, so a short point is that uh, yes. just just make use of your strong and very strong foundational training that you get at Meghna they say, and you'll be among the few talented few who will actually uh, be able to uh, face any kind of uh, you know, the, what I'm saying the uncertain situation because you'll be armed with the uh, multitude of skills and talent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, they will go ahead ask your question. Just speak out. Okay, okay sir. Okay. So, greetings, sir. Uh, good afternoon. Sir, my question okay. is that the bilateral relationship with the Denmark and then among three countries. So, the topic are my, uh, so my domain are the public policy and that social studies, especially economic and dispute management. Regard for that Stockholm International Peace Research Institute. So, release has been by the 2.1 trillion dollar despite the economic fallout in this pandemic. So I would like to ask to you, the new data has been arrived from uh, two days before the Shakti Kanta Das is the RBI chief. So release the repo rate increase. So what is the main reason to increase the repo rate and how to depict with our economics, especially as a poor, especially as a garib work, as a poor work. So what is the main reason regard for that uh, RBI and the increase the repo rate? And the BOB, uh, the Bank of, uh, Bank of Baroda, and among several multi schedules, and then the government uh, bank almost uh, high up their uh, auto loan, and then among other loan. So, this is a one type of that palace. Uh, this is a regard for the Cipri. This is a Stockholm International Peace. Yeah, so, Dawal, I think your question finally is about uh, the increase in interest rates, and you're wondering yeah. what uh, Dr. Ranade is. Opinion yeah. is about. Right? So, Dawal, obviously, you are a very well read person. Aapko sab hai. So, I don't see. Uh, <laughs> not a word. Infla not a word. <laughs> inflation, you know, the uh, RBI's job, or in particular, not just RBI, there is a specific, uh, 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 specific group called the Monetary Policy Committee, which yeah, consists yeah. of six members. Well, their mm -hmm. mandate is to control inflation or, or to ensure that inflation in the country remains between 2 to 6%. Yes, this arrangement was started in 2016. Now we chase So the thing is that uh, uh, the way the tool that they use is only one tool. They have just one instrument that is to raise or to decrease interest rates. Okay. But when the interest rates go up, then the price of home loan goes up, the price of working capital goes up, the price of uh, you know bond financing goes yeah. up, the Grades price of credit order. goes up. So every all businesses typically businesses are against rating so, yes. and stock market is also unhappy. 
So for mm. a long time, for the last four years, uh, uh, Reserve Bank has been keeping interest rates low because they thought that we need low interest rates to to revive growth, to make growth stronger. But yes. though, inflation was hurting everybody, and um, not only that, yes. people mm. when they put your put your money in the bank, you put your a lot of people in this country, especially the elderly, lots mm. and lots of people put money in the fixed deposit. Usme se aapko just three percent, four percent mil raha tha because interest rates are low. Yes. So they were hurting because uh, net of inflation, you were earning negative. Mm-hmm. Finally, uh, you know, it became obvious, especially after the Ukraine war and the huge increase in oil prices. Yes. Inflation is going to be a very serious problem. So I think that's why the RBI is now suddenly, after four years, reverse direction, and now they are going to increase interest rates, tighten liquidity, make money. Very, very, you know, uh, tighter and tighter. That was yes. the main reason. Whether it will really be effective in uh, reducing inflation, we'll have to see. Watch and see. Yeah, this is the main domain, sir. Because of the decrease the inflation and then mega it, so they also to increase the repo rate. Because of that, this is a bilateral relationship will make our uh, good relationship with the uh, Europe and then especially European Commission. And then uh, yeah, IMF also released that this good release. But, uh, because of that, the Indian press release are the one fifty. This is a very lower rank for that one free press India uh, released by that. Uh, some group but the relationship with, between the uh, prime minister narendra modi ji and the among other so this is a good so i hope to uh, manage i imfc uh, indian institute of mass Con- communication with the honorable manisha kapoor and the economics chief of our uh, main uh, okay. so this is a very fabulous and i i keen interest to be a part of the magna vista institute of uh, economics <laughs> i my my fond of that this is institute i fond of that <laughs> So get in touch with us, Dhawal. It's really nice to know that well, you know. Extremely, sir. Uh, call me and uh, I'm the director of academic programs. Happy to talk to you. So Tirthankar, maybe you can come in here. And Tirthankar, Mahima, uh, both of you. You know, one of the points of interest is how has the workplace changed? I mean, we know how we changed uh, when the pandemic hit us. Are things coming back to normal? Are people coming back to offices? Because the last two years, I've heard people saying here, I am managing people across. Uh, 12 cities because there were 12 people in the team, etc. So, Tirthankar, how is that folding out? And of course, you should really enlighten us about uh, you know uh, retail investors coming into the stock market. So much was said in the last two years. How has that panned out? What impact has that had on the markets, etc.? Thank you, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. I, I I would just like to say at the outset, my identity in this program and otherwise is that I am Dr. Anand, a student, a proud student. So he taught me at PhD, and it, it's indeed a privilege. So I will always remain thankful, and it's it's a it's obviously a you know a matter of great honor for me. So um, in terms of how you know life has changed, um, two years back there were large announcements by several companies that work from home is here to stay. Uh, what we are seeing in the last two three months is exactly the opposite. Companies are uh, at least in my space. are very keen on getting people back to office there is a big thrust that uh, let's go to the status quo ante we uh, yeah work from home was good but let's um, you know bring back normalcy functions have started picking up there is great happiness you know and and you know camaraderie across colleagues when they meet each other uh, the online world was helpful was interesting it you know it it shortened distances across continents but it was not quite you know a, a supplement for good old office work so i can say that uh, i don't know mahima might some add something but places like ours um, there is a fairly strong view um, at least amongst all my colleagues that uh, work from office makes a lot more sense now people want to get back i can come to the retail uh, investment part a bit later mahima your views um i think all of us at deloitte also resonate with what you just said uh, everybody wants to get back to office because everybody's bored of seeing each other on screen and people are craving that social interaction so definitely coming back to office is something that everybody's looking forward to and i think uh, this why to also highlight that uh, this whole pandemic this whole work from home setting has also opened up markets like the job market has become very global in nature so even back when i was applying uh, you know if let's say i could apply to job uh maybe in delhi or otherwise which i wouldn't possibly 
would uh, i mean they would not be open to me otherwise you know previously but with this whole remote working now i can maybe look at opportunities in different cities or different countries for that matter so the market has really become global but also the competition has also increased substantially with that so that's what also uh, this whole remote working has done to the market in general right tirthankar uh, uh, very specific uh, complaint and a question coming your way from uh, khushi vaishya so she says she is interested in uh, nec's courses but uh, she finds them uh, too expensive and unaffordable number one and a very very specific question she is uh, doing a bachelor's in economics so she is saying you know uh, between econometrics and behavioral economics what do we think will be more important in, in the future okay so the second question is obviously better answered by dr ranade i mean uh, i i will not even venture to answer that because sir is here but uh, on the first one duly noted i can uh, you know, convey this to nse academy my colleague abhilash uh, who runs the academy and i believe there are uh, the, my answer to khushi is uh, there are major you know it, it's a it's a very concave function so if you do more courses you get volume discounts in a meaningful manner so i think that might sort of help and um, see um, certification and uh, skills they are two different things kushi that is something i would tell you not to berate any any certification certifications are all important but please note that um, you know uh, certifications are good on your cv what really works on your in the job is what you've learned from them so um, if you get three or four major strong skills that will count far more than any number of certifications i keep seeing cvs where people have you know uh, maxed out nsa academy maxed out ncfm maxed out everything that sevi has to offer nism has to offer whatever is there coursera all sorts of stuff people have sort of completed um, but please remember the idea is not the metric the metric is only the means to an end it's not the end the end is the skill so if you are able to do stuff if you are able to solve problems Uh, that sort of remains with you. Um, I mean, I, I think I would, I would basically say that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, Doctor Ranade, uh, Kushi, specific question. I think we just, uh, you, you know, if you can just put behavioral economics and uh, econometrics in perspective for all, all of our students, that will help. So, uh, sorry, uh, Kushi's question was about what is the relevance or use of behavioral economics. Was that the question? Uh, He's almost making it sound. What is more important according to you, behavioral economics or econometrics going forward? But I think we can just put both in perspective for the students. See, uh, first of all, I'd like to say that uh, if you look at the MDA course, Meghna Desai Academy's uh, one-year course, it's fairly comprehensive. It in the sense that it covers. the core stuff the basic stuff which is macro micro and econometrics in great detail and in great uh, not just comprehensive but in fairly rigorously and then you also have a course on behavioral economics and i think applying econometric techniques to for public policy or uh, to study development uh, issues and then of course there are three different elective tracks you can take uh, so i would say, i would say that uh, uh i i don't want to say that one is more important one is less less important it's very important in economics by the way i feel uh, to be able to dirty your hands so actually you have to learn uh, and be comfortable dirtying your hands uh it's uh, in the sense that uh, work with data uh, manipulate uh, the data and, you know do some number crunching write some code uh, run some regressions Uh, to do some visualizations so you should you know it is like actually um, going and sitting in a pottery shop so the clay is the is your numbers and just you know playing around and making some shapes is your regression model so unless you dirty your hands and you can dirty your hands uh, in behavioral science because behavioral uh, economics gives you data on i'll give you an example suppose you have data on from a retail store the kind of uh, a purchase uh, uh you know the data may be in the form of the invoices so let's say over one month so you, there's so much to be so much insight to be gained is there is there a, usually do people do do they do the shopping more on saturday or monday or middle of the week uh, it's what time of the day typically what items do you to people spend money on it is staples or consumables or vegetables fresh produce so this is what you know and from these observations this is you need some basic econometrics to do that 
to do you know data tab even tabulation is i would say part of econometrics even though it's very elementary and then from that you get some insight into people's behavior buying behavior so i don't want you to think of of course when you do the course there will be a separate course called econometrics and there is a separate course called advanced econometrics and a separate course for application of you know behavioral economics but uh, you need to you need to uh, have some grounding in both uh, to be actually a successful practicing economist whether you are in deloitte or national stock exchange or even in an academic career i hope that answers your question yeah. kushi and i can add more two bits on top of that. yeah kushi you yeah mahima go ahead go ahead so just to add to that sir we just recently wrote a paper for deloitte on the ad tech industry and we used a fair bit of behavioral economics to understand certain heuristics as also to understand how uh, all of these big tech players are actually targeting uh, how they send targeted advertisements to certain sec uh, sectors of a population so we used behavioral economics there and uh, also econometrics because a lot of the impact assessment that we do we create models which is dev i mean which is the basis is econometrics so i think both are required when you get out in the job market and a fair understanding of both will definitely help yeah so my two bits on this okay and one of the changes we are making to the curriculum see econometrics at meghna desai was always a compulsory course for the students of the uh, diploma in economics but this year actually we are going ahead and making it compulsory for the students of data science also and i'll tell you what the rationale is see the big uh, you know course that everybody really talks about is machine learning right i mean uh, that's the magic word for everybody but you know going directly to machine learning in my opinion is not advised because you need to have a very good intuition now to build that intuition we have a strong foundation course in mathematics and statistics but that needs to go further okay and i really look at econometrics as the precursor for machine learning because that's where you know the classical linear regression model logistic regression and if you learn that well you know and uh, i wish dr sandhya who teaches i i could be her student uh, some day if you learn that then you are going to get that intuition right and only if you get that intuition then you will be able to apply machine learning very very meaningfully so econometrics at mbae for both courses whether it is the pgp data science or pgp economics is now compulsory okay behavioral economics is an elective you know so you need to be we help you to get clarity about what is going to be your focus or what you perceive is going to be your focus for example if you are fairly sure that you are interested in finance and hence you want to learn the marriage between economics and finance then there is a whole set of uh, finance electives but behavioral science behavioral economics is becoming so important that some of our students have worked at morning star you know and pure behavioral research because there is a lot of risk interest in knowing how investors are thinking you know uh, investor churn or customer churn all of these issues are so important that uh, equity research is uh, no longer just uh, numbers you know behavior of uh, people you know the trends there in all of that is important so you know as people say add as many skills you know to your repertoire as possible so at your age kushi you know maybe in the next one year i can know only learn econometrics and then i would start working but i would definitely put time aside to learn uh, some flavor of flavor of behavioral science definitely i mean i, I would simply say that uh... i am coding more now than i have been in the last 20 years simple plain and simple in more wow. languages yeah 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 after phd this is this i mean tooling up as dr anade said is absolutely important um, you you can't be you know getting insights of the data if you're not coding on your own so yeah mm -hmm. we have a team but uh, it's it's important that you you know the data yourself you make friends with the data and you know exactly what kind of tools you will need and tools are not just computer science it is econometrics also so you you need to have a repertoire of techniques that you are familiar with and a set of languages that you are familiar with and that matrix will help you you know provide any you know this is what you are going with into battle so any kind of problems you should have comfort with a couple of languages i will simply say you know um, i know mba guys are You know, learning R, Python. These are these are good things. They you know, absolutely fam you know, be familiar with that ecosystem. 
sometimes you need slightly advanced stuff but uh, you no know, it's 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 good to be on the, in this just be absolutely comfortable with this and sir i could not agree more uh, a lot of people do machine learning without getting the intuition part of it they you know they are happy putting a model and then you know looking at confusion matrices and saying wow i have done something big <laughs> but uh, they don't realize that you don't get the without the intuition the model specification does not work i would simply also say um, in econometrics in our traditional econometrics what has really added up in the last few years is causal inference these days a lot of uh, uh, focus is given on causal inference especially if you want to make your statement something beyond correlation to causality causal inference is an absolutely important area yeah that's really important i'm writing this down because i need to check with dr sandhya and make sure that we are covering that so you brought out the really important point you know tirthankar uh, and you'll remember uh, you know the five or six years ago i think after the first year of existence mba quickly realized that everything has to have a slice of data science that's when we went ahead and introduced python right and it was uh, you know we were also a bit uh, tentative then because in this country we have believed that programming is the fiefdom of engineers right and we were kind of kind of uh, we were wondering whether we were stepping on a, into a mine field there but i'm so happy to say that i think we confidently say internally now that we have busted that myth you know because our students who come from uh, background such as uh, you know ba in economics bcom even bba bfm again python programming is a compulsory course at mda for the economics uh, diploma students and all, of course the data science and the way we teach it is it is our responsibility to make sure that the economics students also come out fairly comfortable in python i am not saying they can come out and write uh, 75 lines of code which can go to production every day but everybody has seen what programming is programming concepts python and we say that the beginning of a journey you know and some of our students have gone on to work at organizations like zpay in cryptocurrency and they are actually doing they come back and teach me python programming so i, I guess that's uh, some progress okay now we have a question here and i'm not even sure which of us is going to take that but i'll just uh, uh, read What's the question out. yeah so uh, uh, the person says that uh, the person wants to build a career in market research what are some of the must have skills that uh, you know they should pursue during or after bachelors to do that i think dr ranade you had quoted hal what hal varian had said once to me well i know uh, i was going to say that uh, before we answer this question that we don't get too bogged down by this discussion of econometrics and regression the visualization and python especially python uh, because i think it's also important to remember that uh, we also this training that we get is also to kind of get a somewhat rigorous uh, foundation on the way of economic thinking yeah uh, i think that's 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 probably Uh, more important let's not forget that i mean for example I, my favorite some of my favorite examples you know the so called economic uh, uh, curiosities you know when whenever the stock market falls and i know that the nsc honcho is sitting here the you know the ndtv headline says oh today there was a big wave of selling uh, in on uh, on in the market but you you and i know and everybody knows that you can't sell in the stock market unless you have a buyer so for every one seller there is a one buyer yeah. so if there was a wave of selling then there should have been a wave of buying also so why doesn't the headline say there was a wave of buying today in the store hey this is just a, a little nick nack for you to think about another example you know curiosity of economics is one of my favorite examples is that miss um, priyanka chopra she made more money playing the role of mary com in one film then mary com made in her entire career as an athlete and a sports person who won six gold medals i mean globally so as an economist you should be able to understand this phenomenon and be able to explain so i'm saying while it's good to of course be a master of regression and visualization but don't forget some this training is also going to give you some way of economic thinking way of you know logic economic logic 
so uh, back to your market research so essentially you know once you're armed with this tools of you know logical thinking economic economics is about incentives how people respond to incentives how to devise the right kind of incentives to get the right come out outcomes so market research is one application area of economics just like consulting is or 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 behavioral economics is. so market research is typically nowadays is becoming very very important and uh, as i told you there's so much da- you know, the data is just coming out of your ears it's like a niagara falls of data so uh, uh, in the good old days when we had kirana stores the guy knew each, everybody in the neighborhood so you just you know they said are bhabhi ji aapko acha tur dal khatam ho gayi leke jaiye tur dal but now you have these invoices you know the, everything is electronic so there's a huge data trail and it's a day it's a kind of a gold mine for data analysts and market research guys do that i mean they they, they look at purchasing pattern or buying pattern and they they do pattern recognition and based on pattern recognition they try to forecast and that those forecasts determine decision like where to locate a mall or within a mall to locate the shoe store at the entrance or should it be a mall or a jewelry and should the should the fashion zara be on the second floor or should louis philippe be in the corner this is all market research you know this this market research is very important because their analysis and predictions is what lead to important decisions like these so i mean i could go on but this is just to give you a flavor why market research is important yeah sakib has a question which i can feel it's about the mba curriculum okay so he's asking whether it is devised according to job market requirements in india so sakib you know i'll uh, the first part i am okay with it we absolutely devise our curriculum course outlines devised according to job requirements right now yes the job market in india is a big influence but you know given that uh, we are talking of uh, probably 18% of humanity that is a way it's extremely representative of what is going on around the world secondly you know uh, a lot of our students end up uh, pursuing higher studies in uh, in the us or in uk so knowing that we are very conscious that the academic rigor that uh, we have in mba if a student should choose to do that it should also put that person in a very good uh, position to pursue a masters in say public policy or economic or even uh, stem degrees and our students have gone on to the best of universities you know nyu columbia harvard etc <coughs> so it's not just according to the job market in india it's the job market in general uh, the global job market also to enable students who want to pursue further studies and uh, research etc so we have mentors we have guides and we guide the students in the direction that uh, you know their interests lie i hope i answered your question there's a question okay. on sustainable finance can i just take that absolutely aditi who's uh, joined our economics program so she is going to be in the classroom next year so she has so i mean i am very happy to see that uh, you know the students here seem to be like totally on top of things so a sustainable finance is a relatively recent trend i would say last 5 years what this means uh, i mean uh, i know it's a very misleading word but sustainability is about uh, the uh, it's usually applied in the context of environmental economics that the, the ability of the of the planet or of the economic system to sustain economic growth that is to keep tomorrow's prospects high enough uh, that is to keep today's prospects high enough without damaging the prospects for tomorrow so are we able to live a lifestyle which is uh, reasonably uh, prosperous or uh, affluent today without jeopardizing tomorrow's generation that means we should not destroy forests at an unsustainable pace we should not create co2 you know biodiversity carbon emission so that's the way sustainability is understood but now it's come to finance so sustainable finance actually just means that finance is now going into areas in businesses which will support sustainable businesses so it's kind of indirect nudge so i'm glad uh, aditi is saying that uh, she wants to build a career or go in the direction of uh, in of sustainable finance it's going to be very important the biggest mutual fund in the world is a is a, a is a mutual fund called blackrock i think the total assets in blackrock are something 12 trillion dollars which is four times india's gdp and they also manage a big part of china's sovereign wealth 
so the chairman of black rock uh, mr uh, kya naam hai unka uh, larry larry fink. Uh, larry fink larry larry fink he has said that now black rock is going to make investments based on sustainability criteria the new thing that they of course uh, talk about is esg i know that uh, uh, national stock exchange or sebi i think has set up a special committee to now start rating companies on the esg parameters esg stands for environment uh, uh, social and governance parameters social commitments of company so aditi i mean uh, i think uh, the career path is just going to expand and expand because this is going to become more and more mainstream okay we have a question about somebody who seems to be as aspirational about being in human resources so the person wants to know what's the future ahead for uh, human resources and uh, what are the specific skills that they should look for to aspire for a good career in this sector well uh, one thing is that we don't offer an mba in hr <laughs> in mingnan desa academy but hr you know in, in the good old days they used to call it labor relations then they call it personnel then we called it uh, i guess we called it uh, i mean eventually it became known as human resources mm -hmm. essentially it's about people in an organization uh, the old mechanistic view was that you need people uh, to to run organizations to produce output and finally what matters is profit and profit goes to the owners shareholders but then um, i mean of course the modern thinking is all about how uh, people are the most important resource that's why we call it human resource it's not suppose i'm an aluminum manufacturer it's not the bauxite or the iron or the ore that comes in it's not the electricity i use it's not the factory premises or the brick and mortar it's actually the people human beings engineers supervisors who work so the the field of hr is about about the study of uh, what makes people work for organizations how to keep, keep them so in the, our article 15 under the constitution the great indian constitution employment employability and then among article 15 yeah so what about article 15 sorry yeah sir the article 15 has been uh, reached at the employability and the raising or the tenning gender equality and the among the article 14 15 and the article 15 13 uh, this said that the employability are the same in the public domain and then public place like a psu like the rashtriya chemicals and fertilizer and go for the bpcl bombay refinery and the among all so this is article 15 has been uh, demonstrated about the brief idea for the this, uh, this is our constitution the great india constitution so i know yeah, so the, the, well, but the question sorry sir you are talking about fundamental rights given yeah. to us by the constitution of india so yeah. fundamental rights about thing like the right to exist right to life yeah. right to pursue your yes, uh, you know uh, uh, freedom of speech right to pursue yeah. my religion equality yeah. before law non discrimination yeah. uski baat nahi ho rahi hai हम लोग बात कर रहे हैं द फील्ड ऑफ एच आर वॉट वॉट इज वाई एच आर इम्पोर्टेंट आपने बोला रिसोर्स जो यानी वर्कर है लेबर है यानी वर्कर को यानी अपने अच्छे लेबर है अपने अच्छे ऑफिसर है तो वो ह्यूमन रिसोर्स अच्छा है उसके रिगार्ड में मैंने बोला दिस इज माई दैट वॉज आई से दैट वॉज अ कन्वेंशनल थिंकिंग पचास साल पहले या चालीस साल पहले ऐसे था अभी धीरे धीरे एनी सक्सेसफुल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इन इंडिया इन्फोसिस नाम की एक कंपनी है तो उसके उसके एक फाउंडर चेयरमैन हुआ करते थे नारायण मूर्ति वो उनका बहुत प्रॉफिटेबल कंपनी है वो बोले कि मेरा बैलेंस शीट अगर आप स्टडी करेंगे तो बैलेंस शीट में सबसे बड़ा मेरा एसेट तो दिखाई नहीं देता मेरा सबसे बड़ा एसेट रहता है ह्यूमन बीइंग्स वो वो सुबह आते हैं काम को और शाम को चले जाते हैं मेरे एसेट सब चले जाते हैं शाम को कल सुबह आएंगे कि नहीं मुझे पता नहीं रहता है आप मेरी बैलेंस शीट पढ़ते हैं आपको पता ही नहीं चलेगा no he said that 20 he said 20 years ago so we are talking about hr in the context of mba aap bata rahe hain wo human rights and you know fundamental rights ke bare mein Okay. तो मैं कह रहा हूँ कि ये ये फील्ड बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट हो गया बिकॉज द रोल ऑफ ह्यूमन बींग्स इन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन नॉट इन द सर्विस सेक्टर अलोन इन मैन्युफैक्चरिंग सेक्टर आल्सो इन एग्रीकल्चर आल्सो बिकॉज इट्स ऑल अबाउट हाउ टू कीप पीपल एट देयर मैक्सिमम पोटेंशियल हाउ व्हाट मोटिवेट्स पीपल टू वर्क इन टीम्स यू नो ऑल ऑफ अस हू बिकम सीनियर मैनेजर्स आई एम श्योर तीर्थांकर पटनायक विल टेल यू और इवन महिमा और इवन अमलेश so once you start initially you start a career then you become a supervisor then you become a manager then you become a leader aapke under 50 logon ke 16 honge if you have a big factory like lnt you have thousands of people how do you get all these people to work together and who be with great commitment and passion and to the fullest of their potential why is it that productivity in in the western world is higher than india's productivity especially in agriculture 
Why is China's productivity in say 5G or electronics higher? Ye sab, ye sab HR mein aata hai. But you know, this is far beyond what we do at MBE. So I don't I just want to give you a flavor of why HR is important. HR has become mainstream. Well, HR was just delegated to a, a fringe department, usko personal department. Bolte the. Aaj HR manager rehta, HR director is a member of the board. HR, the board of a company spent 75% of its time discussing HR matters. Yeah, uh, so guys, you know, the experts are here. You just feel free to raise your hand, ask questions. You know, time is short. There's a question by Nupur in the field of operations. Have we already answered that? No. Supply chain. Maybe uh, Mahima, you want to take this question? Or supply chain management. Uh, so, um, I think the biggest, I think, uh, I, something that helped me also get a job uh, during my time at Mingna, this I and previously at JP was you need to be at the top of your game. You need to upskill yourself, um, which is very important. I know there's a lot of buzz around upskilling, but I think since uh, most of us are very early on in our career right now, uh, at least the audience, right? So I think you could possibly pick up a few skills that may be relevant to a domain that you're looking at, operations, supply chain management, and uh, even certain skills otherwise that may be transferable. And uh, you can possibly d develop those skills as you grow along uh, within the job, uh, if you decide to come to make a decide or otherwise. Continue to work on those skills and uh, ensure that those skills are transferable if possible. I think that should help. And I uh, unfortunately don't have any supply chain uh, related expertise, so might not be able to answer that very directly. But I think some skills that might be helpful for uh, any industry, I think, be it problem solving, critical thinking, uh, just some sort of analytics, understanding some bit of technology, I think is very crucial for any industry now because technology is uh, a cutting edge across different industries. So that should also help you. Uh, yeah. See, uh, and today, yesterday, India apparently produced its 100th unicorn for this year, some, or you know, the last two years. And next week, we are going to have a listing of a company called Delivery, which is a supply chain story. There's so many unicorns coming up in the, in the supply chain. It's about logistics. It's about making uh, things, materials or output available at the right time, at the right place, at the right spa price. A, a, a company like Danzo, or I think some other company which is now saying 10 minute delivery. This is all supply chains. Yeah, so, you know, Nupur, you, if you have an interest in this, I'll tell you what. Every topic, you know, I, I would never try to correlate it with a course at MDA. But I'll tell you, our students go on to do amazing things. And one of our uh, students, Swapnil Karkare, he's now back working with the academy. He has a keen interest in supply chain uh, management. And he made a brilliant uh, presentation. It was a speaker series event for our students. He made an entire presentation on the supply chain crisis that was witnessed during the uh, pandemic period, you know. And I was really impressed. So... So at MDA, the environment goes beyond the list of courses that you have. Now, if you have very specific interest in this, you know, reach out to us. I'll get you in touch with Swapnil because he seems to have figured this field out. Yes, From sir. the point of view that you may be looking at building a career. So even if we don't have supply chain as a course, I am happy to connect you to our alumni and you can gain from, you know, their experience. Okay, we don't have any pending questions. We do have 15 minutes. So, Mahima, you're still here, I see. So, Amrish, I actually have another thing to go to. So, I'm going to request uh, leave of early leave from you. Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's absolutely fine, Dr. Anadeh. Thank, Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, and uh, good to see you, Teer and, and Mahima. Thank you, sir. And, uh, but uh, Teen and I were uh, recently together at a conference in Amdavad, so it was good to connect. Yes, but sir. we have some pending, we have some pending yeah, stuff, so we will connect later. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. Sure, sure. Thank you. Yes, Thank you, sir. Yeah. So, uh, Sirthankar and Mahima, one of the things that, you know, everybody talks about these big things, right? But it's really interesting to know, I'm curious to know what really is the impact on ground. Everybody's been talking and even more during the pandemic about 
automation really taking off more than it has but you know to put in automation you have to devise those processes you have to put those systems just a vision document overnight doesn't help so is there really an increase in automation during these two pandemic years at nse or at deloitte mai ma i'll let you, why don't you go first and learn on sunday i think yes uh, even i think different domains like hr even like specific to my business we see a lot of automation that's happening uh, people are trying to streamline a lot of processes and even back in jp morgan i was involved in one of the automation processes um so that was even pre pandemic so the trend started even before the pandemic it was accelerated so that definitely there is a lot of momentum around automation and that's that, that's where i think uh, you know for anybody who is venturing into this industry or market for that matter it's very important to have some basic understanding of technology uh, because there's a lot of changes that are constantly happening the client requirements keep changing very rapidly the clients are also requesting for rapid advancement in terms of automation uh, at least is what we are seeing uh, in in consulting so that's Oh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you, you know, nobody can doubt the need for automation. We feel it in our work, in our lives every day. One of the things, well, one of my passions is to follow up on what you alumni are doing, right? I just love to keep in touch. And then suddenly you understand that Tushar Kanade is going to Harvard Kennedy School, etc. And I do it in LinkedIn. You know, Tushar Kodar kind of uh, often slaps me on the wrist, saying, you know, dear, the director of academic programs. how can you be pro- stay, you know stalking people on linkedin but linkedin is an amazing place to figure out you know what our alumni are doing and then call them get them in for a speaker series so i would really like to automate what i'm doing you know put in all the names of our students up to now and then use the linkedin api uh, through a premium account and just keep the alumni database updated from the point of view of making their knowledge their experience is available to people who are applying etc so the need for automation is undeniable at what rate we are embracing it that is something that i have not been able to wrap my head around in fact sir so in one of the project that i just there was my first project that i started off with and uh, the demand from the client was that we want such a sophisticated model that we change this one cell in excel and all 30 40 sheets get like automatically updated and it wasn't just normal linkages it was a very complicated financial model that they wanted so and they presented that to the tribunal so that's the level of demand that are coming from the industry itself yeah 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 the one thing i'll say to you is that you know uh, with excel you need to know that point when you need to uh, gain the escape velocity to go out of that and go into proper software you know <laughs> excel is probably arguably the most amazing tool human kind has ever seen software yeah. that human kind has ever seen but you we always come to a point where you know we have to say let's grow out of this because otherwise it becomes too unwieldy anyways a very specific question directed at the academy by uh, sai prerana uh, karnam uh, those who have done pgp are eligible for masters in abroad and how oh absolutely you know this combination of you have done an undergraduate and uh, a lot of uni- us universities require 15 years of education it's not a hard rule you know but it it's a good arrow to have in your quiver so the meghna desai academy of diploma of, uh, of uh, meghna desai academy's diploma whether economics or uh, you know uh, data science it counts as that last year not only that i think uh, top universities are kind of probably their graduate admissions offices are realizing that students from mba when they come uh, on board you know they don't have to go through as much prep as maybe from some other colleges the rigor is showing and see with american universities the thing is once let's say mba gets three students into purdue and we have gotten three students into purdue then the reputation builds you know yeah. the graduate admissions office there will track very carefully about where students came from and where they performed so the simple answer to your question are they eligible absolutely what you should do uh, sai is you should contact the academy i am happy to do a one on one session with you and you will see the outstanding outcomes we have in terms of where our students have uh, ended up abroad 
and they are actually doing STEM degrees, right? I mean, there's a lot of students who do public policy, pure economics, but the list of universities is impressive. You know, Columbia, Harvard, Boston University, Purdue, Duke, and NYU. It's a long list and an impressive list. Yeah, Nihar, you have a question. You know, I guess you didn't ask it to me the other day when we spoke on the phone. Can uh, I answer that because uh... Absolutely, I come absolutely. from a very similar background. Absolutely. Go ahead, Mayma. So, Nihar, I joined the academy for two purposes. One was to obviously understand economics better. Uh, and second was I wanted to get over my fear of quant. I have always been a very quant averse person despite working in uh, iBank where numbers were every day in front of me. I never really understood math. And... Uh, the structure of my undergrad was also such that I was accustomed to rote learning. Uh, so I never really developed my quantitative skills, uh, basically. So what I did differently at Academy was I picked up all the quantitative courses that were possible. And obviously, I was out of my comfort zone. But the good thing about the courses was that they mm -hmm. were designed in a way that from a very beginner level to an intermediate or a advanced level, one could easily progress through the classes. So I never felt that, uh, you know, I could not cope with the courses. And to just give you an example, uh, in my undergrad during my third semester, I mean, the last year I remember, I was near close to failing in econometrics. And in during Meghna Desai, I topped all the econometric courses and I never had to open a book. So that was the level of intuition that, uh, um, Lisa was talking about that is built during the course. So I think don't worry about the, you know, the not being good with math part of it. I think just embrace it and you have to deal with numbers. I think going forward, when you get into the job market, there's no escaping. So just start working on the skill and you should be good with it. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, you know, see, uh, we all have a problem with quant. You know, I used to think, see, I never dropped marks in mathematics when I was in school and college. But I had to you know, uh, reach age of 40, when my son really got interested, 45, when my son really got interested in math, to know that I didn't really need, know quant. I started then, and I have been pretty well since then, right? So, Mahima is absolutely right, you know, and especially the professor who teaches mathematics and statistics, it's a treat, in my opinion, to learn from him, Professor Shailesh Goregaukar. And what I tell students is, don't think of it in terms of just those 72 hours of course, right? It is the beginning of a journey, you know. It will be an eye-opener for you, unless your eyes are already open. There are some kids of, uh, you know, who are in that category. But I say it's the beginning of a journey. That course will tell you that, hey, you know, is this what it's all about? I could have done this, you know. And then the journey begins. And then there are these brilliant books, you know. There are books in mathematics, in mathematical circle by, you know, uh, Fomin et al. That... I even now open it every six months and I just go through it. So that's the journey that we want uh, to get you addicted to. And I see some students who have signed up this year, Aditi, Pranil, uh, Vanessa, Shadesh hopefully is about to sign up. So Pranil, I know I've been saying that we'll hold that session. So even before college starts, you know, we are going to hold these sessions where we give them resources, say, play around with these problems, you know, try this material, read this up so that you will even be better prepared. And right now, you know, the university that we are affiliated to, Gokhale Institute of Politics uh, and Economics and MBA, we are actually working on a course which we can offer to undergraduate students as a one-off thing. We don't want to call it maths. We don't want to call it stats. One of the young teachers at Gokhale came up with a brilliant word. He said numeracy. Let's call it numeracy. I think that is what it's all about, you know. We... It is, I think it is, it is our basic human nature that enables us to be friends with uh, numbers, okay? Somewhere, school and college make sure we lose our way. So we are trying to come up with a course which, uh, you know, and we don't want to give big names to it, calculus. We just want it to be a course of 10 or 15 problems that you are very likely to en encounter in your jobs. And then that's a you've learned one method, a paradigm of solving it. You know, it could be how many unique passwords are possible with a certain password policy, you know, or it could be a scheduling problem, or it could be something which is the beginnings of operation research, etc.
so we are very excited about you know how we teach uh, mathematics and uh, you know i think there are some students here like uh, karan wadekar was on the call but he seems to have he got so much into it that we actually had him teach some of the topics this year okay so i would just you know if i were a student and i wanted to discover my mojo in mathematics i would definitely go at least join the academy for this one mathematics statistics course aha this is a you know motherhood question i think how to become an economist what are the knowledge and skills they have just for my broader perspective tirthankar this this got to be you <laughs> how to become an economist uh, you know i am an economist but uh, my first exposure to economics was uh, in ninth standard where it was part of social studies at that time it used to be for that particular year cbsc had made it uh, history economics and geography instead of history civics and geography so that was the you know just a touch that i had of economics nothing else for the next 5 years an undergrad degree masters degree and then in phd uh, i met economics again it wasn't easy uh, you know uh, exactly you know orthogonal to what uh, amresh sir just pointed out for me the maths part was easy the economics part was zero i mean i had no exposure so you know life is the grass is always greener on the other side as they say and uh, yet and and the you know one subject i was really weak at was macroeconomics and in my career i am an economist so you know things can change how, how to become an economist i think uh, i think all the stuff that we have been discussing in this uh, you know in this program all through how skills are important how you know attention to numbers is important um, you know these are the things that will make you an economist it, these are you know answers which are generic which may seem as uh, dr anade said you know um, you know something that you've heard before but they really work and for me uh, it took some time before i got an intuition about how macroeconomics uh, how i should see you know macroeconomics i built up a little bit of a framework in my mind and uh, for the last 22 years now uh, you know i think yeah it took about 5 6 years to build up this sort of framework i sort of look at real external monetary fiscal policy politics i i kind of look at segments in my mind and because i am a macroeconomist and with you know i work with investment bank in, in work with investment banking corporate banking uh, so and now at a stock exchange so having a framework really helps you know as mahima rightly pointed out uh, being tooled up really helps in general you know you need to know uh, i mean i as i always this is my understanding you should know the language of english why do i say language of english you should be able to convey yourself succinctly precisely that's very very important uh, you should also know the language of mathematics in the sense that if there is a concept if you are not able to frame it is it within you know with an equation then test it through numbers then you know you have insights and you are you are stuck with the insights it's better to move forward and empirically test what you sort of thought and which is why uh, what dr ranade spoke about you know dirtying yourself in data is absolutely so so important you can start with excel you know all respect to excel excel is is good enough i i did a lot of excel in my time but uh, at some point you have to move beyond excel have a language which you are absolutely comfortable with um fully agree with what dr anade said you know remember the tools that we spoke about are again second order conditions the first order conditions you know in any course any generic course is economic thinking you know how do you allocate resources that's the that's my understanding of economics at every level you know it's it's a constraint optimization problem for for the mathematically inclined amongst us you know you you can maximize the utility function subject to budget constraints or you can you know maximize profit minimize cost all these things you know might seem esoteric but that's what you do in real life all the time without realizing it so thinking about uh, you know resources how to you know maximize things out of you know, you know limited resources is actually what economics is all about um, going to the specifics i would say keep reading insights you know you, you can't become a, become an economist at least in in my area uh, macroeconomics 
without uh, you know absolutely being aware of what things are happening you should be like a like a sponge uh, you know and this is to students uh, be like a sponge read 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 as much as possible some of the greatest investors in the world uh, you know warren buffett downwards keep reading and uh, you know these are people that you you know uh, read about on the net personally over the last two decades i have met enough people in india and abroad who read like you wouldn't believe and who really really read and that's there is there is no other uh, there is no alternative to that frankly and uh, i think i think that's that that put you on the right track i would always say that you know have a big picture idea try to get a big picture idea right i mean so i i think in hindi so sometimes i ask myself mai ye kar kya raha hu what what exactly is happening i i keep asking myself maybe you know you ask yourself at least once in five six days at least mai kar kya raha hu that's important and uh, so long as you have your bearing right things are fine i'm also very happy to see uh, raj ravariya here so uh, raj this is hi it was nice to see you here so raj is a student at mba i have been meeting uh, raj and muskan uh, you know uh, through this year and uh, yeah it's absolutely a pleasure to see raj here yeah, really, really nice it was the, one of the main reasons that i want to attend uh, seminar yeah so that's a really important uh, you know part of life at mda you know just see raj and muskan they were actually mentored by tithankar and uh, every student is assigned a mentor and uh, they are industry leaders and very most of them are all of them are eminent people and i think that program really works for a student now on the topic that you were talking about tirthankar you know and now this is a very simple question but uh, you know it unleashes tremendous possibilities look one of the things that we do is you know right in the beginning of the year the year starts off with an interaction with lord meghnath desai our chairman founder okay and listening to him is an absolute pleasure you know see he did a course ideas of 10 great economists a long time back and even today it is uh, you know available at in the academy as a self learning program and if you listen to him talking about adam smith you know he'll bring it down to a language you know where they, they talk about uh, you know can you explain it to your grandmother so he is that kind of a person now one of the things i am trying to do this year is last year dr anand nageshwaran who is the chief economic advisor of india today he did, he taught macroeconomics at mda and he had that effect on students you know anand has this way of explaining economics such that he just carries the, the class with him and uh, students are really delighted now one of the things i am going to do is at gokhale institute i bumped into a really interesting professor you know a young professor ashish kulkarni and at the undergraduate level there he does a course principles of economics so i spent 4 to 6 hours talking to ashish and that feeling i got you know he seemed like the kind of guy who can explain economics to my your or his grandmother so this year i'm going to organize a speaker series you know i want ashish to teach at, address the mba economic students for 6 to 8 hours on principles of economics so he said i do that course without bringing any quant into it you know or any theories any calculus any graphs so i think these are some great ways to see because we were when we were in engineering school we used to go and try to listen to nani palke wala and of course we couldn't understand anything so these kind of resources which we had access to you know, some of us might have actually chosen economics after engineering okay uh, mahir there is a question which only you can answer somebody is asking how to get in touch with us so if you can uh, check the chat box i think that's just in your area okay dikshita das mahir she is asking i just completed uh, ba i had statistics in my first two years how do i apply to your institute and which course would you suggest uh, be a fit for me so dikshita just go to our website you know you express your interest there somebody is going to call you or you know if uh, it helps i can put my number here in the chat box for you I'll and put my number uh, sir if you want i'm just putting yeah 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 mahir i i didn't realize you were still on the call so dikshita mahir is going to uh, 
put either mine or my or her number just talk to her yeah so diksha we can speak and i can give you in detail information about the application and all so we can have a chat i'm going to call you okay there's a question there i think we are running out of time guys uh, mahima krishankar uh, how are you doing on time i'm good i'm good okay I so i have to leave so i have a client yeah. meeting yeah mahima you have already overstayed by 30 minutes i know you told me that you could only be here till uh, uh 5:30 so uh again anonymous attendee can you share your experience and insights on writing a research paper related to economics kritankar over to you so um, i mean the first research paper that you write will be a tough ask you know you don't know what's happening you don't know where to begin you don't know i mean there are so many things to read it 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 can be confusing and it can be a little distracting uh, what's absolutely important is get a framework these are five or six steps that are absolutely needed the to work on the paper have a have an absolute you know clarity at least try to get a clarity on what will be the end product and then work work towards it it uh, you know the first paper becomes uh, is a is a has a steep climb but then after you know thereafter things become things become fairly easy get your research right ask the question spend the maximum amount of time uh, asking you know as i told mai kya kar raha hu what am i trying to do what how are we exactly adding ashok desai who used to be again chief economic advisor several years back used to come to ig idr and say uh, if the research that you're doing is not non trivial don't bother it's okay if you are phd students and you are answering a question that is easy to answer that is understandable don't bother you know don't don't try throwing mathematics at it it doesn't matter if if your insights are something not not you know something that will not occur in general to people then you have added you know to the to the literature and then you 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 got something that people will read so in a paper you know not all papers are like that they can be descriptive papers there can be surveys of literature there are so many things but uh, always try and see what exactly have you added to the literature it, by the way and be very selfish about it at the end of writing the paper the person that should be benefiting the most has to be you it's absolutely important that you know as in ulysses they say right this guy the king says i am a part of all that i have met every paper that you write has to leave something on you has to add to your skill set and has to add to your you know repertoire of experiences that prepares you for the next paper that's the that's the sort of broad way to do things and this this has sort of uh, worked across subjects you know that you write papers in across areas you have a have a framework have a, an idea of the finished product and keep asking be you know absolutely ruthless about it my adding my adding or am i just writing words doesn't writing words doesn't matter you can write a 100 page report and people will just go through it and say okay okay thanks and you write 15 pages and you know you can have it full of insights all of us probably know this you know john nash's thesis and there are several other important stuff you know areas where people have written you know 30 pages 40 pages and have really you know gone through have have really you know that's the pinnacle of insights i think that's so true sir because you know uh, when we when i started working out one of my directors actually told me that at every stage where you you reach some conclusive stage ask the so what like what is the implication of this because unless you know the so what there is no take away message and that that entire whatever you written is redundant so there's no point of having it on the report absolutely absolutely so hani novel has a question so hani you are asking what uh, masters degree will complement professional course in actuarial science now uh, are you talking of actually uh, you know uh, becoming an actuary because if you are going to be that then you know that you are going to be pretty much extremely busy for 3 uh, to 4 years clearing those exams and after that you will be too busy for your own good so come in here you can uh, you know unmute yourself and uh, i need to know whether you are actually thinking of a full blown uh, you know becoming an actuary yeah 
Yeah, Suhani, do you want to unmute yourself? Okay, so, you know, I don't know, uh, I am assuming then you are talking about uh, just a short course in actuarial, actuarial science. Now, whatever I know about actuarial science, you know, it and knowing students who have pursued it in the last few years, I would think if I were in your place, you know, somehow econometrics, quantitative, of course, you know, whatever you do, uh, mathematics will be a big part of it, especially statistics. Econometrics to me seems like it goes well with actuarial science courses. And of course, finance, that would put you in a very good uh, position career-wise. Okay, I think you guys stayed with us till all the questions uh, were over exhausted. Uh, normally, you know, that doesn't happen. So I guess we can call it a day. It was an amazing session, Tirthankar. Uh, Mahima, uh, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Dr. Ranade left early, but always such a learn big learning experience being around uh, Dr. Ranade. And to our attendees, I hope we were able to answer your questions uh, and help you with that. To the rest who had no questions, I hope we added a lot of value with this session and uh, any other things. Look, we really love to talk to young students because firstly you know uh, as i say that talking to you guys helps me uh, hopefully helps me keep alzheimer away or it will help me keep alzheimer away secondly the academy can learn from two uh, two stakeholders right the two one is the students what are their aspirations and one is the corporates which we already keep, always keep on talking so we love to interact with you there is no such thing as a stupid question from a student for us get in touch with the academy get in touch with uh, mahir Take my number, give me a call. I'm happy to talk. Scott, I think we are calling it a day today. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.